promise, it was launched by Floris. However, after that he broke his promise. With a stone coach like Floris, I couldn't believe my eyes when I read the news, and Brissett was there, replacing Fitzpatrick. No words can describe this pain. Yes, Fitzpatrick pushed Tua, he's seasoned, and has played for most of the teams at the national champion. So what's the difference between Brissett and Fitz? Why not Carson Wentz, or Russell Wilson? It is difficult to understand. Will he replace Tua in the Dolphins? Is it too early to lose faith in Tua? When recently, it was the tentacle that felt disgusted with life in the Dolphins and continued to choose a silent bow. Before all criticisms, before all rumors. And surely you still cannot forget, when it was only two months ago, when the news of Watson was like a knife stabbing the hearts of those who love Dolphins. Tua also chooses to be silent, and then what? Will people let go of Tua? Is not. Some of his teammates criticized Tua badly. Are there those people who were liquidated by Flores? What happened to Tua, or would he works on elevating his game to the next level? Too many difficult questions, but follow me, we will crush them together. Tunga Vailoa in the latest statement said, coming to the line pre-snap, post-snap, identification right off the bat. A lot of those things, I'm working on right now and I don't t want to share too much. Once again, Tua made everyone uneasy. Obviously Flores pushing Fitzpatrick away was a very serious problem. Flores talked about Tua Tungavailoa and rumors like this. I mean I'm excited about Tua in this upcoming season. You think about his situation last year coming off the hip, kind of threw him in the fire there in week 7 or week 8. I'm not sure exactly what week it was. But he started 9 games. I thought he made a lot of improvement really throughout the course of the season. Had some ups, had some downs, like all the rookies and lumps, like all the rookies and like any rookie. But I'm really excited about that year 1 to year 2 jump, being more comfortable even down here in South Florida. He's got a place. Look, that rookie year you got a lot going on. You got to get a house, you got to get a car, you have to move to a whole new city. I mean, there are so many things that are going on. I thought he handled it well last year, but I'm really excited about this upcoming year, especially. Again we got to think that he had no OTAs, different training camp. Look. You guys know me, I mean I'm all about the development of players and helping them develop and helping them get better. And I think this time, an offseason is really going to be helpful to him and really all the rookies. I'm really excited about working with them this offseason. And when asked about the rumors, Flores still insisted on defending Tua. My reaction is, I'm excited to work with Tua. So I mean, honestly, I think I just mentioned that after the last question. That's where my interests are. That's where my excitement is. So, I think he's again like I said I think he's a talented player. We here believe in developing players at all positions. I think with an offseason, with some OTAs with more reps, more repetitions like any player, they develop and get and get better. And I think he feels the same way. Tua and I had lunch yesterday. We talked about his family. I think a lot of that development is about building relationships. He's doing well. He's confident. I'm confident in him. I'm really looking forward to this offseason. And then, bang, Flores brought on Will Fuller, and it seems, would it be a pre-preparation for a Texans midfielder going to the Dolphins? And would Brissett just be the perfect excuse to change to another QB? We never know what Flores is calculating. For a fan, the thing to do now is to believe. For Tua Tungavailoa, the most important job is the brushes aside uncertainty works on elevating his game to the next level. Tua Tungavailoa has had a dramatic year. While he was selected number 5 overall in the 2020 NFL Draft by the Miami Dolphins, he was at the same time recovering from a major hip injury that had many wondering about his future as an NFL quarterback. Even after Tungavailoa was inserted into the starting lineup in Week 8 and won three straight games, Dolphins head coach Brian Flores opted to bench him in Week 11 and then again in week 16 despite always maintaining the rookie was his starting quarterback. When the dust settled at the end of the regular season, back. When the dust settled at the end of the regular season, Tungavailoa had gone 6-3 as a starter and had thrown for 1,814 yards, 11 touchdowns and 5 interceptions. There is plenty of reason to be excited about the future when it comes to the Dolphins' new quarterback, 
as Tungavailoa became the third rookie signal caller in the Super Bowl era to not throw an interception in his first five career starts, and became the first Dolphins rookie quarterback to win each of his first three starts. He also became the first Dolphins player to lead a game-winning drive in the fourth quarter or overtime within his first two NFL starts since Chad Henney. Unfortunately, with the offseason came new issues Tungavailoa couldn't control, as the Dolphins are currently rumored to be in the mix for Houston Texans star quarterback Deshaun Watson, who is looking for a change of scenery. If Watson is traded to Miami this offseason, the deal would likely include Tungavailoa as well. With uncertainty surrounding his current six current situation, Tungavailoa says he turns to what he can control, and that's how he can improve as a player and a leader. The coming months will be about getting back to 100% health and preparing for a breakout year. Tua Tungavailoa under Saban age. Getting that first NFL season under his belt is important, because if there's one thing Tungavailoa knows, it's how to handle pressure and make those kinds of adjustments to find success. His introduction to the sports world at large came via one of the most risky in-game adjustments ever made by legendary Alabama head coach Nick Saban. Tungavailoa, who was a true freshman at the time, replaced Jalen Hurts at halftime of the 2018 College Football National Championship game, and helped the Crimson Tide rally from a 13-0 deficit to win 26-23 in overtime against Georgia. That marked the beginning of a very successful college career, as Tungavailoa finished his junior season as Alabama's career touchdown responsibility leader. His 87 touchdown passes moved him past A.J. McCarron for the most thrown in program history, and he finished third in Alabama history with 7,442 passing yards. Tungavailoa's entrance into the NFL wasn't as dramatic, but his stance on himself, his team and winning has never changed, and that became clear when we asked him what the best, highs, he experienced were in his first professional season. It wasn't his first touchdown pass or his first career start or first comeback victory. It was any Sunday his team came out on top. Recently, Tungavailoa posted pictures of himself working out this offseason that generated quite a bit of attention. It looked as if he was building muscle, and Tungavailoa told us, getting his body back was important for him this offseason. Really just trying to get my body back, it's the first time I've had a real offseason so just trying to get stronger, trying to get faster, trying to get back to how I used to look. Back at Alabama, Tungavailoa laughed. Just trying to get better with those things as far as the offseason. It took quite some time to fully recover from the hip injury he suffered while at Alabama, but Tungavailoa also did Alabama, but Tungavailoa also dealt with foot and thumb injuries during his rookie campaign that forced him to miss a Week 12 matchup against the New York Jets. Tungavailoa said that one of the biggest lessons he learned in his first NFL season was about in-game adjustments. Breaking down schemes and packages opposing defenses or throwing at you on a drive-by-drive -drive basis, and truly taking control of an NFL offense full of veteran players, as opposed to your fellow collegiate athletes, was a challenge. I would say adjustments, you got to adjust on the fly, Tungavailoa said when asked about what he learned in his transition to the NFL. If the defense gives you a different concept that you haven't seen, you got to know how to adjust with your guys and tell them how you want things done. You're a coach out there. With that being said, I think that's what I need to get better with, too. But I'm glad to get that first year under my belt. The highest moments I had were when we won, Tungavailoa said. Anytime that we won, those were the- But on the other hand, the lows are when you lose and when you don't achieve what you set out to achieve before the season started. So what does Tungavailoa need to improve to keep Miami in the win column in 2021? Among many things, he says it's about his preparation. For me, it's about the little things, the little details about my game, Tungavailoa said. More so how to prepare a lot of the time. What to look for, how to watch film, what to do when you're watching film. Tungavailoa is also working on being a leader off of the field this offseason. Recently, he teamed up with USAA, the official NFL salute to service partner, to connect with military veteran Kerry Smith, who was selected as one of the five grand prize winners of USAA's salute to service sweepstakes. Smith got to engage in a virtual hangout with Tungavailoa and won several other prizes. You know I have a lot of family members that served in the military so I have a deep appreciation for those guys, Tungavailoa said. Tungavailoa said. Devonta Dreaming. 
The Dolphins should make big strides this offseason by way of the 2021 NFL Draft, as they have two first-round picks including the number three overall pick thanks to a previous trade with the Texans. It's believed the Dolphins could target a wide receiver with that top pick, and many are projecting Miami will select Tungavailoa's former teammate in Devonta Smith, who caught the game-winning pass from Tungavailoa in overtime of the 2018 National Championship game. Smith became the first receiver since 1991 to win the Heisman Trophy, after a season in which he caught 117 passes for 1,856 yards and 23 touchdowns. In the college football playoff national championship against Ohio State, he caught 12 passes for 215 yards and three touchdowns, all in the first half. Smith said last month that he and Tungavailoa have discussed the possibility of running it back together with the Dolphins, and it would definitely be something that would help Tungavailoa thing that would help Tungavailoa in his development as a quarterback as well. When we asked Tungavailoa how he thinks Smith is going to fare in the NFL, he couldn't help but laugh. I think his transition to the next level will be kinda slim to none, Tungavailoa said. In a way where it won't be much changing. I think the competition will be different for him obviously, but he will be more than fine. I know a lot of people say he's too small or too skinny, but his film speaks for itself. He goes out and takes care of his business, does what he needs to do. They don't call him the slim reaper for no reason. Not many rookie quarterbacks have had to face the kind of adversity and outside noise that Tungavailoa has had to over the past year, but that's not going to phase him. The possibilities, the trade rumors, the constant questioning can only take your focus away from your goal, which for Tungavailoa is winning games and ultimately winning a Super Bowl. Our goal has always been the same. You want to win as you can and as many as you need to be able to get into the playoffs, win your division and get to the Super Bowl and try to win that, said Tungavailoa. I think that's always going to be the goal.